गुड मॉर्निंग the respected professors faculty members scholars and the students very good morning to one and all and warm greetings for the day it's an immense pleasure for me to welcome you all for the fdp session on advances in machine learning i krishnaveni assistant professor from department of ecs klvf and feel proud to invite you all for the one week uh, fdp program in association with academic staff college klvf any gathering comes alive when the right start to it we have ensured the same for this fdp here the team bring the right amount of the enthusiasm and the knowledge practice sessions obviously which results in success for the participants we honor to have dr we honor to have dr bam bahadur sinha sir as today for the today's resource person i take my privilege to introduce to the session sir uh, i would like to uh, give a small brief about your profile read dr bam bahadur sinha sir is currently working as an assistant professor in department of data science and intelligent systems at indian institute of information technology darwad he has also worked as ad hoc faculty in the department of computer science and engineering at national institute of technology andhra pradesh He received M.Tech and Ph.D. degree in Computer Science Engineering from National Institute of Technology, Nagaland, in the year 2017 and 20. He was awarded with a gold medal in M.Tech from NIT Nagaland in the year 2017. He has published 15 research articles. Out of nine papers are indexed by SEI, SEIE, and three are indexed by Scopus, and one one is an IEEE International Conference. and two are in national conferences he also has one of the copyright and one patent on his name his research interests include machine learning deep learning and optimization techniques for this small brief i we warmly welcome for the today's session sir thank you ma'am thank you for the brief introduction so before starting the lecture uh, i want Uh, someone to enable this host privilege for me so that i can share my ppt oh yes sir we are transferring the privileges to you yeah, yeah you are the presenter now sir yeah it's so is my screen visible 
Yes, sir. It is visible, sir. Okay. And you are audible as well. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So first, first of all, thank you, Kerala University, for inviting me to deliver a lecture for this MDP. And thank you, organizers, for inviting me. So with this, I uh, start my today's um, session on recommender system. Okay. So. Like when, when this term comes to our mind, recommender system, so what exactly it is? So in our day-to-day -day life, we all used to come across uh, several recommendations, right? Like we used to get recommendations from our seniors or from our faculties, or even if you talk in terms of your e-commerce world, when you are purchasing something, immediately you used to get recommendations, right? Like if you purchase a shoe, immediately you start getting okay the people who bought this also bought this so that is kind of some recommendations so uh, a famous quote uh, given by steve jobs states that a lot of times people don't know what actually they want until you show to them so this is quite obvious right like there are plenty of uh, products which are available uh, to us in the market until unless the presenter presents those product to us we are not quite interested in it right so I'll give you one example, like there was an excerpt from the book, The Long Tail, which was written by your by the author, Chris Anderson. In 1988, a British uh, mountain climber named Joe Simpson wrote a book called you Touching the Void. Okay. He wrote a book named Touching the Void. And which, which was based on some mountain trekking related. Okay. And it got very good reviews also, but very modest successes received. And it was soon forgotten also. So then a decade later, a strange thing happened. Like another author named John wrote a book named Into Thin Air. Into Thin Air, he wrote. So, and this book was also based on this mountain climbing tragedy. So, and this became very famous at that very time. Okay. And it became a publishing sensation. Suddenly, what happened was, when this book was released, people started, also started uh, buying this book also. Once again, Touching the World has also started to sell again. So, the demand of Touching the World was so high that even outsold this into the into three million book after some time. But what exactly happened here? Well, it turns out that since both the books were based on the same theme, Amazon started suggesting that readers, that people who liked this into theme here would also like touching the world. So when people took the suggestions, they actually started liking the book. They actually started purchasing this touching the world book. Okay. So when people took in the suggestion, they actually liked the book and as a result wrote positive reviews which resulted in more sales, okay, ultimately leading to more recommendations, more positive reviews, it will generate more recommendations and thereby kicking in a positive feedback loop. And this is what is the power of recommender system. So you can see here one book, which was long forgotten, but immediately because of the recommendation, it started becoming as a best selling book. So this was just one uh, small uh, example for explaining you what can be the power of recommender system. Okay, so here also one more quote is given that many receive advice and only the wise profit from it, which was a given, which was given, uh, this quote was given by a famous American novelist named Harper Lee. And she said, she said that, as I said, in our day to day life, we come across many suggestions, right? Suppose if you to talk about a PhD and a PhD scholar and her, or his or her supervisor. Supervisor gives suggestion to his or her scholar. So it depends upon the scholar how wisely he is going to profit from, how wisely he is going to use those suggestions in order to improvise his research or in order to improvise his uh, research article or in order to improvise his the direction of research, problem statements, right? So we receive advice from many, many people who have some experience, right? And we try to get profit from it. So they, this is the working principle of recommender system as well. So the recommender system also 
tries to take advantage of the previous history which we are having about the product based upon the previous history of the suppose it can be the attributes it can be the purchasing behavior it can be the feedback about the product okay so based on all those things we used to make the recommendations to the end user okay so basically the recommender systems are the systems which are going to help an individual in finding information or in finding the product information such as your like if we talk about the news recommendations it is kind of information sharing or we can say like nowadays if you see go to coursera or edx or any academy you will get recommendations for the courses so that is kind of sharing the information then for the product product like you're in amazon you try you used to get product recommendation similarly for services like uh, when you are in for windows services you will get some recommendations right so these these all are based upon the analyzing the available reviews or the suggestions which are given provided by some other individuals okay so it is also referred as your information filtering system the term information filtering system means that like when you have a continuous streamlined flow of information okay like suppose you have continuously the information is coming from different 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 domains then uh, if you see if you know like you if you talk about a simple laptop screen okay suppose if it is a 15.6 inch and 6 inch screen and you have opened up amazon website so you have some limited space over here which you are going to display to the end user right so how you are going to filter this continuous stream of information and how what relevant information you are going to present it to the user that complete flow will be termed as your information filtering system it is going to filter the information the continuous streamline information and it is going to give you only the useful information which is relevant to you okay or like uh, th there was also one quotation given by the amazon that it is not possible to have 3 billion stores for 3 billion users that is quite obvious like if there are 3 billion users in amazon we are we cannot provide 3 billion separate stores based upon the users interest but in the virtual environment it is quite possible okay like we are going to analyze the preference or the interest of the user and based on that we are going to arrange the or based on that we are going to recommend only those products to the user in which he might he or she might be interested in okay uh for for and for justifying the power of recommender system there are two uh, two facts or you can say two statistics which i uh, pulled out from one microsoft research report they say that around 30% of the 30% of the page views on amazon comes through recommendations so it is quite a big percentage right 30% of the people are coming to buy products on amazon through recommendations similarly this uh, neil hanty who is a chief product officer of your netflix he also said that more than 80% of the movies which are watched on netflix comes through recommendations so it is quite obvious that this recommender system are going to play a very important role in the success of any e-commerce or the e-commerce environment both both from both perspective from the user perspective as well as from the service provider perspective right so from the user perspective what it will be from the user perspective it will be the user satisfaction rather than watching the irrelevant products we are showing them only the products in which he or my, she might be interested in and from the service provider perspective it will be the sales will increase overall the profit of the online of the service provider will increase right so it is a win win for both the situation so that is the power of the recommender system okay now let us go to the some different approaches like uh, or we can say how the recommender system evolved for the passage of time so it all started with basic item hierarchy where where people, where the service provider or the uh, the, the product like e-commerce e service providers they used to check okay 
if you have bought a particular product, then you are going to also buy a particular product. Like here, one example is given that if you have bought a printer, you will also need ink, right? Similarly, if you if you relate it with the normal shopping mall, shopping complex, you will see that the bread and the butter will be kept next to each other. So what is the point of keeping that? So they used to do some association rule mining on that and they used to see the purchasing behavior of the user and they see that people who have bought bread, they have also bought butter most frequently. People who have bought, they have also bought jam most frequently. So in the same manner, this item hierarchy will also do the same thing. Like when you, once you buy your bread, automatically it will start giving suggestion for you to buy butter or to buy a jam. So this was quite an old uh, thing for, to recommend, right? So the next level, the next level, it goes to the attribute-based recommendations. So this attribute-based recommendation used to check for the different attributes, okay? Like nowadays, if you see this uh, in on Netflix, this money heist is quite famous, right? This is one TV series on Netflix, which is quite famous. And it is based upon some uh, robbery related, bank robbery related. Okay, so it has some attributes like uh, uh, they have some star cast. So based upon those star cast, it will also check what other TV series or what other movies they have also stared in. And they will start recommending that to you. Similarly, if you suppose if you watch, you can try it on your own also. You just go open on Netflix and just try to search for a Superman movie. So you will see, then automatically you will get all the different uh, Clark Kent movies and you will also get the different series of your Superman series like what were the older versions of the new upcoming Superman series or, or you can also see the Marvel, Marvel, Marvel movies. So all these are, they are going to check for the different attributes, okay. And based upon those attributes, they will start making the recommendations. So this is what your attribute-based recommendation is. The next is, the next which you revolutionized your recommendation system was your collaborative filter, filtering system. So this was first introduced by your reason. Okay. So this collaborative filtering system was basically divided into two subparts. One was your user base, user to user similarity base, and the other was your item to item based similarity base. <coughs> Excuse me. So what what it used to do? It first like let let's see for this user to user based similarity. So what it used to do? Suppose we have a user X and another user Y, okay? We want to make some recommendations for user Y, okay? So what it will do? It will try to search all the similar users, all the similar users to Y. How much similarity is there in between this user X and user Y, user A and user B, user B and uh, user Y, means similarity between X and Y, A and Y, B and Y, Likewise, all the users which are present in the system, they used to compute the similarity and this similarity can be computed using different similarity techniques which we will discuss in the upcoming slides. Like what are the different techniques which you can use to in order to compute the similarity between the users. Okay, so based upon those users, they will see, okay, suppose the similarity between user A and user Y was quite high. So what it will do? So so user A is whatever items he has bought and user Y which he has not bought, it will start recommending those items to user Y, okay. One more thing, if you see over here, one example is given here. People like you bought beer, also bought diapers. The main intention behind giving this uh, example was that you can see the relation between beer and a diaper nothing there is no correlation between this beer and diaper but recommendation this is what recommendation system does it does not see whether there is a correlation between the items or not it just sees the purchasing behavior like if the people if more number of people have bought beer and diapers together then if someone is buying a beer automatically it will start recommending diapers to them okay 
So this is what was your user to user based similarity. The next is your item to item based similarity. <coughs> so in item to item based, the only difference is that rather than computing the similarity between the users, they are computing the similarity between the items. So here you can see, if you have like uh, Godfather, you will also like Scarface, like right. Similarly, if you have like Money Heist, you will also like the Ocean Eleven series because both are having the same general information. Both are based upon this crime. Both are based upon the robbery, right? So both are having some matching general information, right? So based upon that, the similarity between Ocean Eleven and Money Heist. And the similarity between, suppose, another series is there. There is a comedy series called Friends. So this similarity between Friends and Money Heist will not be much. So if you have caused Money Heist, the system will recommend you Ocean Eleven and it will not recommend you the Friends series. Right? This is how this Netflix is working right now. Even if you remember in 2010, this uh, Netflix even uh, rolled out one, uh, around 1 million uh, prize award competition regarding if someone proposes a recommender system which is better than their recommender system then they will they can win a prize amount of rupees around one one thousand dollars or something like that so from there only this recommender system became quite famous and uh, people started uh, focusing more on this uh, doing research in this recommender system domain the next was your social plus internet graph base so in this we all encounter, everyone almost is present in this social media. Everyone is using this LinkedIn, so, so Facebook. So you have seen there that we used to get uh, information, people who may know. So how they used to do that? The people you may know used to be based upon the mutual friends which were having. The location or if you have visited that place or if you have a common group, you both are belonging to the same group. Or you have this, you both have the same, uh, you both like the same page, or you both are interested in the same kind of content which are present on the social media. So based upon all these different different things, suppose if a new new faculty joins KL University, so immediately if you if he or she opens this uh, their LinkedIn profile, they will see that they will he will he or she will start getting recommendations for connecting with the people of different. Uh, different employees of KL University. As soon as he updates his job profile, that he has started working at the KL University. So all these are working through, and the backend, the working is done by your recommender system. Okay. Similarly, for Facebook also, we used to get friend suggestion. So that is also working at the same working principle. Right. We used to they use some graph-based approach. Facebook has their own algorithm for doing this uh, recommendations. Okay. So they use some graph based approach in order to find the relation between one user to the other user and they make they used to make the recommendations accordingly. And finally is the model based which is quite famous nowadays. Different researchers are making use of different models, deep learning, machine learning, AI models in order to, uh, in order to generate the recommendations. So what they used to do, they used to take some training set. They used to train the model and then they used to test the model using the test set and they used to say, okay, this very particular support vector machine or this very particular uh, similar value decomposition is giving a very high accuracy or it is giving a very less mean absolute error. So right now we are at this model based approaches. We are using different hybrid approaches. Actually hybrid approaches are the future of your almost most of the research approaches where we are trying to club the advantages of different standalone algorithms and we are making, trying to make the best use of out of it. Okay, so this is how this recommender system evolved from your item hierarchy to attribute based, then their collaborative system, social network, social plus internet based, graph based, and then finally the model based systems. Okay. So in this in this era of your abundance of information on the web, consumers use many strategies to determine how they are going to use their free time, what to buy, or for whom to date, right? In order to give users effective recommendations during the interaction with some broad set of information. 
So this is what this recommendation system does. It automates this this complete process. Okay. This is this recommendation system is a major player in the fields of your movies, in fields of music, films, books, photographs, journals, news, and several several other nuanced uh, suggestions such as your financial services, marriage, and many more such things. Okay. So in the mid 1990s, this researchers began developing uh, recommendations while uh, maintaining a range of filtering strategies such as your collaborative filtration, your content-based filtration, okay, and a lot of research has been undertaken in this uh, field of recommended system. If you go to this uh, scholar, scholar Google Scholar, and if you search for the recommended system papers, you will find out a lot of research has been done in, in this recommended system in the last few decades, okay, to develop new algorithms to strengthen the accuracy of the recommendation. So usually, a conventional recommender system produces recommendations for users using four filtering techniques, namely your demographic filtering, content-based filtering, collaborative filtering, and your hybridized techniques. Okay, let me go through that classification slide and then we'll get to know more. So as I said, these are the four different techniques which is quite famous right now. Collaborative, uh, content-based, demographic and this hybridized. Okay, these are some of the famous or the most widely used by different researchers. So this content-based filtering recommend items which are close to those items which were previously chosen by users. Okay, while this demographic, this content-based, what it does, it used to, this content-based filtering, it used to recommend the items which are close or which were previously chosen by the user. Suppose if I have bought, uh, suppose I have bought an Apple product. Uh, suppose I have bought an iPhone 12, but immediately iPhone 13 gets released. So it will start recommending based upon my previous purchase history, it will start recommending the iPhone 13. Okay, so this is how this content based system works. Okay, then when I say this uh, demographic systems, this demographic system use demographic characteristics of item such as your uh, gender, age, location, it is to produce the recommendations. So out of all the aforementioned techniques, the most effective and widely implemented technique in the field of recommender system is your collaborative filtering. Okay, just hold on for a second. So, so one of the most widely being used uh, system is your collaborative system. So the fundamental idea of this collaborative system is that it, it is, this algorithm is used to capture the user preference and then search for similar users, which we saw just now, right? In the user to user similarity. This is going to capture the user preference and then search for similar user profiles. Okay, and if we are using the collaborative filtering system based upon your item based, then they are going to find for the similar item, item similarities and then they are going to make the recommendations. So these profiles are used by the recommender system to provide users with new recommendations. And a number of recommender systems were constructed by this interest of several domains such as you can search for this uh, Ringo, which is uh, your music recommendations. Similarly, you can search for this uh, Bell Core video recommender. Well, for video recommender, which is your movies recommender system. Similarly, you have a Jester, which is your jokes, yeah, sorry, joke recommender system. Okay, so the, this is how different recommender systems are there, right? So now let let me go through the pros and cons of each one of them one by one. So now when we talk about this content-based system, once again. So this content-based system examines the attributes of items which has been rated by the users in the past. Okay, let me show you, I think I have slide here. So what it does, it used to examine the attributes of the items which have been rated by the user 
in the past and builds a portfolio of user interest. So it uses the keywords to describe the item. Like here you can see the movie ID, movie title, release date, IMD viewer, and several other keywords have been used. Right. So this type of system is based upon some reclamation, analysis, and filtering of the information. Okay. So this figure shows you the working principle of a content-based filtering, which is deployed using some ranking. Okay. It, after doing this all analysis, it is going to perform some ranking, which you can see here. Yes, different ranking values are present there. And based upon these ranking, um, so we used to recommend or we used to decide the top end recommendations. Okay. So, so the two notable ideology for this content-based filtering system is that, so number one, the attributes of the item which serves as a supplementary apart from the rating information. Like in CBF, content-based system, Apart from that rating information, rating information means like how much rating the user has given to that item. Apart from this rating information, we are also passing, we are, what we are passing? We are passing some supplementary information. We are passing some supplementary information in order to make the decision, right? So the, and the second is, this is the first uh, ideology. The second is the user portfolio which comprise of user interest information it, <coughs> so the the second is the user portfolio which comprises of user interest information basically holds the items for which the user has shown interest in the past past so it helps in analyzing the user past behavior Okay, so if we are accessing, or we can say the history info, then it helps in analyzing the user past behavior. This content-based content filtering also helps in avoiding your cold start problem. So what actually this cold start problem is, so like when, suppose uh, you are a new user and you have just now logged in, to Amazon, you have just now created a new account in the Amazon. So how this system are going to recommend you? Because you don't have any past records, you don't have any information, you don't have any purchasing history. So in that case, it will be very difficult for the normal recommended system to give the recommendation. So for tackling that, this content-based filtering can be used. So some of the pros of this content-based filtering system is that, Number one is independent user. So in order to build a personalization system, in order to build a personalization system, in order to build a personalization, this content-based approach does not require any similarity index between the users. You can see here, like we are not computing any similarity between the users of the items, right? The recommendation list can be directly generated by analyzing the item attributes and the profile of the users, right? Based upon the, suppose if you have created a new account based upon the location. So that very service provider will see what are the different items in which uh, that locality people are quite interested in. Until or unless the system becomes warm enough, they can recommend you those set of products till that time, right? And they also have enough information, uh, as I said, enough information to avoid to avoid cold start. Right. So new items can be recommended to any user despite of having very less rating information of other users present in the population. Right. So we don't want any information of the other users, we can directly make the recommendations, right? And the third is your transparent behavior. So this system makes you aware of the attributes of items on basis of which the recommendation has been made, right? So we don't need to 
we don't need to we don't need to like it's, it's not a black box we will actually come to know on what basis the recommendations has been made so it is showing some transparent behavior this is one of the pros of your content based systems similarly some of the demerits of this content based system includes your uh, it is having insufficient diversity and your novelty right the, you can clearly see that uh, it is getting stuck in the filter bubble problem we are not recommending something in which we are not surprising the user with something new item we are just making the recommendations based upon his past behavior to the past purchasing history so that is why we can say it is having some it is having some insufficient diversity and the novelty or you can say it is going to give arise the problem of your over specialization right similarly it is going to have a possibility of inaccurate uses of attributes for item selection right and it requires lot of domain knowledge for successful implement implementation of the content based recommender model right until unless we have good amount of information we will not be able to make the recommendations right next is your bounded content analysis like if the item does not have enough attributes suppose we have a item which is not having enough attributes information so giving a more giving a more precise recommendation list will be a very tough job for the content based system in that case and as i said it is going to face a filter bubble problem which is which means that the recommendation of similar items which the user has already liked in the past we will be keep on giving those recommendations to him him or her only <coughs> okay these are some different model based system that is a probabilistic based model uh, your decision tree model neural network model okay the next is your collaborative system so this type of uh, recommender system let me see yeah this type of recommender system makes recommendations to the active user if you see here these are some set of active users and we want to make recommendations for suppose which uh, we want to make a recommendation for user a okay so what it will do it will make recommendation to the active user by using the information about the other users like here we have b user b user c user d e f right so it is going to make use of the information of all the other users it is going to club those information that accordingly it is going to make the recommendations so you can see here the main idea behind the working of your collaborative filtering is the presumption that the users who had similar preferences in the past are presumably to have similar preferences in the future as well so it makes use of different similarity index between the set of uh, users or the set of items in order to decide the personalization list so the collaborative filtering system permits the fluid recommendation which means that it can it can recommend an item x to a user a based on the interest which is shown by another some user suppose user b so this recommendation system is able to learn itself without depending upon the attributes of the items so unlike your content based system where we were depending upon the attributes of the system attributes of the item here it here this very system is able to learn by itself by just as soon as a user makes a new purchase automatically the similarity calculation can be done and automatically the complete recommendation list can be readjusted or regenerated okay so this recommendation system is able to learn itself without depending upon the attributes of the items unlike your collaborate unlike your content based systems right so this figure depicts the working of your collaborative filtering system deployed using some similarity index computation here we can use different similarity index like your pearson correlation coefficient we can use jacquard coefficient jacquard similarity we can use adjust, uh, adjusted cosine similarity we can use we can use cosine similarity tani motor coefficient there is a number of different similarity index based upon different problem statement we used to use our different similarity techniques which are available to us right and after deploying this similarity index computation we are going to decide the top end recommendations right so the the some of the pros and cons of this collaborative system is that 
So this system is going to apprehend the change in the user behavior. As soon as the user shows the interest in some other item, immediately the recommendation list is also gets updated, right? It also produces the diapers and serendipitous uh, personalization list. Serendipity means like we are going to surprise the user by giving some uh, some recommendations which is out of the blue. Okay, so but we also take care of he or she might be interested in that item. We don't give just a random item based upon some facts. We are going to make the recommendation to him or her. Okay. Next, it provides solution to the filter power problem, which is being faced by the content-based systems, which we saw just now. And it, we have also seen in the different research papers, it has been observed that the collaborative-based system shows dramatically high performance, even in case of your, your very large user space. Very large user space means, like if you talk about the Amazon data set, or if you talk about your mobile X data set, there are around <coughs> If you talk about your movie lens 100k data set, so there are very limited users, around 943 users are there. But if you talk about movie lens 25 million data set, there are thousands and thousands of users, thousands of lakhs of users. So in order to do the computation for those lakhs of users, it's a cumbersome job, but, but this collaborative system does it efficiently by providing high accurate results. Okay. But the, in the initial process of recommendation, we don't need any domain information. That is also one of the advantage of using this collaborative system. Okay. But now let's talk about, uh, there, there are so many advantages, but what are some of the uh, disadvantages of using this collaborative system? One is, it is going to face the cold start problem. If a new user A comes in, and if we don't have any C, like here, we have this user A information. If a new user A comes in, if we don't have this information with this, how we are going to compute the similarity with user B? How we are going to compute this similarity with user C, D, E, and F? So in that case, the system used to face a lot of difficulties. So if the system has not encountered the user or the item in the training phase, it is very difficult for the collaborative system to recommend it in the final prediction or if it's a final personalization list. Okay. So the collaborative system can also act as a very complex and expensive system. This is another disadvantage of a collaborative system because suppose if you have a very high dimensional data set. So in that case, the calculation of similarity index, suppose you have around, uh, as I said, one lakh users. Okay. Now you have user one, two user, one lakh. So the computation of similarity between user 1, 2, 3, then up to 1 lakh, and user 2, 3, up to 1 lakh, 3, 4, up to 1 lakh. So you can see the complexity is so high, so high for computing the similarity. So we can say these are quite expensive systems in case of high dimensional data sets. The calculation of similarity index of millions of users creates a very hectic job for the system, right? Which is quite obvious from this picture as well. And most of the data sets we know that in real life scenario are sparse in nature. Like if you talk about yourself, how many items you have rated? Uh, like suppose you have bought 10 products from Amazon. So tell me honestly, have you rated all the items? No, right? Obviously no. You will not be taking that hectic uh, job of rating the product. Most of the people don't rate the products after purchasing, even if they like or dislike the item. So in that case, what happens, like most of the data sets which we encounter in our real life scenarios are highly sparse in nature. So this generates recommendation in case of, uh, or we can say generating recommendation in case of collaborative systems with very high sparse data sets might lead to the recommendation in some wrong direction. Okay, it might not be able to recommend the accurate products to the end user. So this is one of the another disadvantage of using the collaborative system. Then you can see here, we have also highlighted some memory-based systems, model-based systems. So when we talk about this memory-based systems, these are some heuristic-based collaborative systems. So it makes 
this uh, memory based system makes use of user creating data set to compute the similarity index between the set of users or the set of items. For example, we discussed this user based collaborative filtering that also comes under this memory based system. Similarly, for item based collaborative system also comes under this memory based systems. Okay. So, this user based filtering focused on computing the similarity between the users on the basis of their rating behavior. What, what items they have rated, right? So it has certain limitations such as the high computational cost and the scalability issues as, as we discussed just now. So in order to overcome the challenges being faced by the user-based products, this Amazon.com introduced this item-based filtering in 1998, okay, which noticeably improvised the system performance and also worked efficiently in case of scalability. So this item-based system was having high accurate results as compared to the user-based system even in case of scalable environment okay the next is a model-based systems which is and it is uh, this model-based system is well known for exploiting the group selection of the utility matrix the utility matrix is none other than your user rating item matrix okay the utility matrix contains the ratings given to the items by several users present in the population. So the model-based system makes use of machine learning and uh, data mining techniques to train the recommender systems. Okay, so this model-based methods exploit the group selection of ratings to predict the ratings and it performs offline computation of training. So we, as compared to this memory-based and the other approaches, this model-based is going to perform this offline computation of training. Okay. That is why it is going to achieve better accuracy as compared to your memory-based collaborative system. Few examples of your uh, this memory-based model-based system include your association mining models, then clustering models we have, we have Bayesian models, neural network models, similar value decomposition models, and many such models are there. Okay. Next is your hybrid system. For hybrid system, uh, it is an hybrid approach that, that is going to condense different existing models such as your content-based, your collaborative-based systems or any other personalization techniques. As the name as the uh, name speaks for itself, the word hybrid, it means a mixture of one or more different techniques, right? So this is going to combine even the content version of the collaborative system or different other personalization techniques it is going to combine. So this technique, came into picture to overcome the bottleneck which was being faced by the most widely used your collaborative systems. And it can also be referred as a combination of one or more techniques. For instance, a system which is making use of a matrix factorization approach to reduce the dimension of a large data set. Or, and, and later using collaborative filtering system to generate the personalization list. So it, this overall system can be stated as a hybrid system because it is combined matrix factorization technique and the collaborative filtering systems, right? In order to generate generate the final personalization list. You or we can say suppose if you are using any optimization technique, like using a genetic algorithm to optimize the performance of a cluster formed by the users, that can also be traced in order to construct a hybrid system. Okay. Let me show you example. This is one of the environment, or we can say this is. One of the examples where we have combined this user-based collaborative filtering and the item-based collaborative filtering. The combination of both can also be treated as your hybrid model, hybrid collaborative model. Okay. Few advantages of this is that it is highly effective in combining the benefits of different recommender systems and uh, it provides a platform for optimizing the recommendation model. Unlike the first uh, widely used collaborative system, they were not providing any platform for optimizing the models, right? Then it overcomes the major drawback of your content-based and the collaborative-based systems such as the cold stack problem, sparsity problem, gray sheet problem. These problems which we will discuss at the end of this uh, session, okay? Then we have some improved performance as compared to your collaborative system and other recommended system, these hybrid systems. In terms of uh, accuracy or in terms of error, it is very low error and with high accurate results. Okay. Some of the disadvantage includes the cost of implementation is going to be very high. 
the the cost of uh, complexity is going to be like in terms of time and space is also going to be high it is going to make use of some explicit information which is very hard to collect because of the privacy concerns right then we have different set of uh, hybridization techniques like we have weighted cascade switched mixed meta level feature combination feature augmentation so let us see each one of each one of them one by one so when we talk about this weighted hybrid system it simply means we are going to give like suppose we have two different techniques so we are going to assign some weightage to both the techniques like how much weightage we are going to give to this very technique and how much weightage we are going to give to the other technique so the decision for this hybrid method is taken on the basis of the score obtained from different recommender system so the result of each recommender system is combined with a single numerical component to decide the final recommendation list so this is how this weighted hybridization system works next is your cascade so in this in this cascade weighted is that so in this cascade the recommendation system is based upon a chain of recommendation that is one recommendation suppose this is one recommendation system the one recommendation system is fine this recommendation system is fine tuned by the previous the other uh, recommendation system or we can say one recommendation is fine tuned by the result of the other recommendation system okay this is known as your cascade one after the other next is your switch switch as i say you know either this one will be active or this one will be active if there is two system either this will be active or this will be active so this method is capable of choosing one technique sorry this capable is capable of choosing one technique from the set of available techniques or this from the set of available recommended systems there can be different it's, it's not necessary that there will be only two there can be more than two also and the system should be able to choose one out of the available recommendation systems that is known as your switched hybrid recommendation system next is your mixed okay next is your mixed so in mixed different recommendation system works together to give a collaborative decision in the final personalization test so that is your mixed okay the next is your meta level so in meta level the output of the recommendation system is used as an input for another recommendation system see the difference between cascade and this uh, meta level is that in cascade the output here whatever output was we were getting that was getting fine tuned by recommender this another recommender system but in this meta level the output of the previous recommender system is acting as an input for the next recommender system so once again the complete process of recommender system will be done the next level okay second last is a feature combination feature combination so different knowledge resources or different knowledge sources features are clumped together to form a single domain okay and final feature augmentation so features of one knowledge source is computed to make it compatible to work as an input for any other recommendation algorithms so that is known as a feature augmentation okay so these are some of the hybrid systems there are some other personalization systems like your demographic based systems knowledge based systems and community based systems so when we talk about this uh, demography based systems so these systems utilize the user demographic information such as the input and it, it is going to categorize the users based upon the demographic data so demographic data can be your uh, gender it can be your age it can be the location it can be the qualification so on okay so these are some demographic information which we make you to find the recommendation so it assumes that all the users belong to a certain demographic group and have similar preferences so this type of recommender system is mostly unsuitable for your users by your real life application because it's very hard to collect the demographic data of the users because of the privacy concerns and but it can be used as one of the methods to solve the problem of your cold start user because when the user is the only information which we have is the location information or the gender age the qualification this when he has created his profile so this sort of information we will be having so we can make use of all those information to 
to perform this uh, demography based recommendation. Okay. The next is a knowledge based recommendation. So, this type of recommendation system uses uh, makes use of the knowledge about the users and the products for generating a recommendation, focusing on the user interest on any particular set of products and checking whether the recommended item meets a user requirement or not. If it does not meet, then we will uh, adjust the knowledge base again. Okay. So, still this system analyzes, analyzes how any recommended item meets a user requirement, therefore can analyze the relationship between the item and the needs of the recommended, the recommend, recommended uh, and the needs of the items to be recommended, the item that is actually being recommended. Okay, so these systems are further classified as a case-based and constraint-based. Okay, so when we talk about case-based, what it does, it exploits a problem-solving methodology that tries to solve any newly introduced problem by redeeming similar problems that have been solved in the past and then rehydrating the solution for the new problem. Okay, the next is a constraint-based. So, uh, the word constraint itself says that we have some constraints on the recommendations. So, it specifies the constraints on the attributes, okay, of the item. Certain rules are defined that matches the user requirements with that of item attributes. So this time of system requires some user requirement definition, item attributes, and constraints explicitly. Sometimes this type of recommender system faces the over constraint problem and thus the soft constraints are more suitable when, by, when we are implementing the constraint based algorithms. So whenever we face this over constraint problem, we used to follow certain steps, like we used to reorganize the model by revising the constraints and the preferences, or we try to find the solution which satisfy the subset of the constraints, and that is how we try to address this constraint-based recommender system. And finally, is your community-based recommender systems. So this type of recommender system forms a community. Okay, this community, this community formation is done based upon the sharing interest, or we can say this community shares common interest. So it uses a user item interaction inside the community and recommends item after aggregating the decision obtained from the community. So it overcomes the scarcity and the cold start problem with new users as well. So this, this is a very high level, high level classification or taxonomy of recommended systems. So if you are actually working on this recommended system, you should be aware of this complete set of available recommended systems. Now we will go in slowly into the direction of research direction. We will talk about the data type. We will talk about the research problems which you can take in the sense of recommended system. So I hope the, this basic introduction for the overall recommended system is clear. So uh, let us take a two minutes or five minutes break and then we will start with this uh, data types used by the recommended system. Okay, just give me one minute or two minute break and then we will start. Hello, sir. Uh, your voice is not audible, sir.
So, so we discussed so far about the different recommended systems, right? Now we are going to start with the uh, different data types which are being used by the recommended systems. Okay. So basically, like overall, if you talk about the different data types, we can be classified as the behavior pattern data, social economic data, rating data, proceeding data, and the production informative data. So, so for the purpose of uh, creating the customer portfolio, it is very important to know what the customers are browsing on the web, right? So different websites consider different uh, types of input data from the customers for calculating the recommendation. So this input can be classified into this very uh, set of this very set of categories, right? So now let us see each one of them one by one. So one is the first one is your behavior pattern data. So in this behavior pattern data, it is going to include some statistical data about the characteristics of the population, such as your uh, customer identity. Then sex information, age, occupation, contact number, date of birth, domicile, hobbies, work experience, income, and such information will be come under your the behavior pattern data. So this, these are these different statistical data, which is going to tell us about the characteristics about the population. Okay, so that is considered as a behavior pattern data. The next is your socio-economic data. So this type of data is used, this socio-economic data is used to identify common communication patterns between the objects and realize the patterns. So it includes your click times, the duration of browsing, or user operations on the web content such as your downloading, what content you have downloaded, the scrolling, or some other homogeneous activities like how much time you have spent on a particular video or a movie, so those all will come under your socio-economic data. The third is your rating data, which we have seen uh, till now, which we were discussing till now. The rate basically reflects the perceived quality of any product. So it includes different scores of rating, such as your discrete or the continuous rating or the inherent remarks such as good, better, bad, worse, right? So those all will come under your rating information or rating data. The next is your proceedings data. So this proceeding data describes an event and always has a time dimension. So it includes this uh, proceeding data is going to include your purchasing history. Or you can say, yeah, purchasing history, which is having your purchase date, purchase quantity, Price, discounting, discounting means like at what discount you have bought those things, those, those products, that will all come under your proceedings data, okay? And the last is your production informative data. So this type of data is stored perpetually for regulating the business processes. So the information such as the content description, then we talk about the content description or the product description for web and the movie attributes for movies are used by are used by the business professional to take proper decisions which well suits the organization's economic growth. So the production data must be documented efficiently in order to ensure its value to the organization. Okay, so these these are the different set of data types which are available for making use in your recommended systems. Okay, so, so far we were discussing about so many, uh, again and again we were saying about similarity measures, similarity techniques. So these are some of the different 
similarity techniques. So the main major two classifications are based upon the distance based and the correlation based uh, similarity. So the performance of the most of the recommended system depends solely on the similarity measures. So the precise similarity calculation decides the accuracy of the model. So each similarity measure has some, will have some pros and cons, which we will discuss the, just now, we will see. So the peer set, of all that, this peer set correlation coefficient is the most widely used similarity measure by the recommended systems. So this uh, similarity measures can be classified as the distance based and your correlation based. So when we talk about the distance based, it can be having your Euclidean distance, Manhattan distance, Minkowski distance. So if you see this Euclidean distance, you all are already aware of that. It measures the distance between the two points in the Euclidean space. And uh, like suppose if we want to compute the distance between two points Z1 and Z2, or which it will also be equal to distance between Z2 and Z1, right? So it will be equal to under root of I equal to 1, 2 and Z1 minus Z2 whole square. Right? But this N is represent for dimensions. Okay. The next, so this is going to measure the distance between the two points in the Euclidean space. Right. And this uh, formula is given the distance between two points and Z2, where this Z1 and Z2 are the two points of the objects in the Euclidean space whose similarities we want to compute. Okay. So point Z1 is further having Z11, Z12, Z13 up to Z1n. Similarly, Z2 is also having Z21, Z22 up to Z2n. Okay. So these are represented in some Cartesian coordinate format. And this n represents, this n represents your dimension. Dimension of your Euclidean space. Okay. The next is your Manhattan distance. So in Manhattan distance, this distance measures, or the, this distance computes the distance on the grid lines. Okay. It is calculated by summing the horizontal and the vertical component of any set of points. For example, the for, let, let's suppose for same distance z1 comma z2, it will be i equal to 1 to n z1 minus z2. Okay, so the same it will remain this n is representing the dimension z1 and z2 are the two points, and z1 is having z1 1 1 2 up to z1 n, and z2 is having z2 1 z2 2 up to z2 n. Okay, the next is your Minkowski distance. So the Minkowski distance displays a generalized representation of both your Euclidean distance and your Manhattan distance. And it is represented by the only difference between Manhattan and this is Minkowski is, it is also going to be I equal to 1 to n, Z2 minus Z1, P1 by P. So this P is the dimension over here. Okay, so these are the different distance based similarity. Now, these are not, not uh, quite uh, being used by the recommended system, but just for the information sake, I discussed these topics also with you. The main widely used are your Pearson correlation coefficient, oversight. If you go through any research paper based on this recommended system, you will definitely come across these terminologies, which is mentioned over here. So, like if we talk about this Pearson correlation coefficient, so in this measure, the similarity is computed based upon or between the objects or points on basis of common items or the common ratings. Okay. Then the similarity generally lies between minus one to plus one. Okay. Where this minus one is representing your negative correlation and this plus one is representing your positive correlation. And if we get a value of zero, it represents a no correlation or zero correlation. Okay. So this, uh, let me write the formula also for you. So suppose once again, let me write over here. So suppose once again, if we want to compute between Z1 and Z2, the equation will be I equal to 1 to N, Z1I minus Z1 dash. Z1 dash is representing the average rating for this Z1. Similarly, Z2I minus Z2 dash divided by under root of I equal to 1 to n, Z1i minus Z2, sorry, 
z1 whole square z1 dash whole square to i equal to 1 to 1 z2 i minus z2 dash whole square okay so this z1 dash z2 dash represents the average value received by the point z1 and z2 and n denotes the dimension of the space okay this is what in Pearson correlation for efficient days so if you this uh, if you want to compute the similarity between the uh, users using this PCC, so you can replace this Z1 and Z2 with the user rating information, right? Similarly for cosine similarity, this no, am I audible? Yeah, yes, sir, it's audible. Sir. So, uh, cosine similarity being uh, mostly used in case of uh, high dimensional positive spaces. So, it is, it also helps in finding the similarity between the two objects on basis of certain attributes. Okay. And uh, let me write down the equation, then we'll be able to relate it. So, it is represented as cos theta is equal to i is equal to 1 to l z1 i dot z2 i divided by n i equal to 1 to n z1 i whole square i equal to 1 to n z2 i whole square okay so this this you can relate with your uh, the cos theta values of uh, minus 1 to 1 okay so accordingly this cosine similarity also works so one one another thing is if you relate this cosine and adjusted, what is the main difference? Why we need an adjusted cosine? If the cosine was working appropriate, what is the need of adjusted cosine? So the answer for that is, uh, like if you relate it in to the real world scenario, the rating behavior of one user varies a lot with respect to the other users. Like suppose I am very much lenient in rating. If I am giving very even if though even even though I am not liking the movie much, I am giving four out of five star to that movie. Whereas the other user who is very tough in giving the rating, like suppose you are very tough in giving the rating, you have not liked the movie, so you will give only one rating to that. So you can see over here, even though we both did not like the movie, but the behavior of the rating is differing. Right, the behavior of our rating is differing. So, if we compute the similarity in such cases using a normal cosine, there will be a very high problem of clubbing the wrong set of users together, right? So, in order to do that, in order to avoid that, we introduce this. We have introduced this uh, for adjusted cosine, okay? So, what happens in adjusted cosine? Let me tell you. So in adjusted cosine, so in adjusted cosine, what happens? Uh, let me write down the first equation. Then it will then we will discuss about what actually the difference is there. I am writing this on with respect to the recommended system, not the general equation.
So here, if you see this U I one I two, this is the voting. So this represents the set of users who have rated both item I one and item I two. We are trying to make prediction for this particular user. We are trying to compute the similarity for this particular user U, such that we have some set of I set of users which has rated both item I one and I two. We are considering only the commonly rated items right now. Okay, so this both item I one and I two, and this R U I one and R U I two is representing the the rating given by user U to item I one and the rating given by user U to item I two. Okay, and this R U dash is representing the average rating given by the user U. So now when we are subtracting the average rating, suppose my average rating was very high. As I said, like I am very lenient. So my average rating was four. For most of the item, I was giving four. But your average rating for a tough paper was three. So now when we subtract this average rating value, then we are trying kind of normalizing uh, all the other user behavior to the same scale, right? So that is why this adjusted percent came into picture. The next thing is Jacquard similarity, and uh, it is also an index-based value. Used for calculating the similarity and the diversity of the set of objects, so it is defined as a division of intersection over union. Okay, so intersection Z one intersection Z two over Z one union Z two. Okay, this is what our Jacquard similarity for Z one comma Z two looks like. Okay, which can further be broken down into Z one into intersection Z two by Z one plus Z two minus Z1 intersection of Z2. Right. So the similarity values for this Jacquard condition is going to range between 0 and 1, where 0 represents the low similarity and 1 represents the high similarity. So this equation shows the mathematical representation of a Jacquard similarity between your object Z1 and Z2. Okay. Then we talk about the different evaluation metrics for recommender system. So when we are talking about uh, this uh, prediction of the rating values, or we can say some regression type of problem. So in that case, we are going to make use of this mean absolute error, root mean square error. But when we are trying to predict whether a particular user is going to like this product or not, so in that case, we are going to use precision, recall, effort score, accuracy, IUC, IUC, RUC, power, and all. Okay. So the performance of the recommender system is evaluated under certain scenario to decide its efficacy. Okay, so these are some of the most widely used evaluation metrics. So if we talk about this mean absolute error, so this mean absolute error measures the deviation of the predicted value from the actual value. Okay, it measures the deviation of predicted value from the actual value. So suppose if our actual value is AI, predicted value is PI, so you buy N for all set of prediction, I equal to one to N. This is representing your mean absolute error. Okay, so this PI is the predicted value and AI is the actual value for any item I, such that this item I belongs to N, I equal to one to N. At this N denotes the number of items for which the ratings has been predicted. Okay. Like suppose for 10 items we have predicted the rating. So for 10 items we have to compute the error. How much is the deviation between the actual and the predicted rating? Right? And next is your root mean square error. So this root mean square error has a, has a benefit of penalizing large errors more so that it can be more appropriate in some cases. For example, if B of by 10 is more than is more than twice as bad as of B5, but if B of by 10 is just as bad as of being fine, then MA is more appropriate in that case. Okay. There is also a concept of your mean squared error. So in that case, we remove the square root from this RMC. But the problem is this mean squared error is going to give high high weightage to high to, to larger errors. So in order to avoid that, only we are shifting on to our mean absolute errors. Okay. Then for this precision recall and effort score. Okay, let me slide.
So when we are talking about this precision recall and the success, let me draw a diagram so it should be easy to relate. So for here we have positive, negative. These are our predicted class. Here also suppose we have positive and negative. And these are our actual class. So we predicted positive, it was actually positive, say so it should be true positive. We predicted negative, but actually it was positive, so it is false negative. We predicted positive, it was actually negative, false positive. We predicted negative, actually it was negative, too negative. Okay. This false positive is also known as a type 1 error. This false negative is also known as a type 2 error. Okay. So let me define the precision requirement. First is a precision. So precision will be true positive by true positive plus false positive. Okay. And your recall will be what we also call it as sensitivity will be true positive by true positive plus false negative. Similarly, you can compute for the specificity also. The specificity will be true negative by true negative plus false positive. Okay. Then uh, we can compute the negative prediction accuracy. Or uh, we can say negative predictive value. So it can be just opposite of this TN by TN plus FN. Finally, we have accuracy which can be represented by TP means all the true positive and true negative by all set of uh, all set of the predictions TP plus TN plus FP plus FN. Okay, so this is all about this precision recall, uh, specificity, specificity, sensitivity, negative predictive value, positive predictive value, accuracy. Okay. Now let us discuss some of the research problems which you can carry out in your if you want to proceed with this recommended system. So the first one is the long tail, uh, large value of data long tail problem. Okay. So what happens? So today the online stores are like uh, booming, right? And we can get almost any item at the single click of a mouse, right? However, in the brick and mortar area, there was some limited physical space to store the goods, right? Hence, the owners only displayed the items which were most popular. So, even if you go to the shop now, then you will have a one storehouse. So, in the main shop, they will present the items which are most frequently sold, and in the storehouse, they will keep the remaining uh, items, right? So, this means that a lot of products were not even displayed, even though they had great quality, like books or CDs. So in short, the shopkeepers had to pre-filter the contents. However, the online shopping industry changed the scenario. Since there was unlimited space to space, the need to filter was pre-filter was gone. Right. On the contrary, this gave rise to a phenomenon which is also known as your long tail effect. Okay. So this kind of problem is very much common in your e-commerce systems where most of the rated items are condensed in a small fraction of most popular items. So it is the utmost job of a recommender system to consider even the less popular items by which are having very few ratings. Right. So if suppose
So these are some set of items which are quite famous and these are taken differently. But this is the long tail of items which are not quite popular. These are the long tail set of items. We are talking about that only. How we are going to consider a scenario where it is able to solve the long tail problem as well. So this problem can be leveraged by using your content based methods to find the similarity between the new item and the popular items which can further be clustered and assigned with some aggregate ratings. So this is one of the problems which is quite a bit prevalent in the recommended research problems. The next is sparse data. So in almost all the top notch websites such as your Netflix, YouTube, etc., only few users give rating to few set of items, thus leaving most of the data set as sparse. So similarity computation in such scenario is a top job for the recommended system. So how we are going to to reduce the sparsity of the available data set to us plays a key role in the success of the recommender system. Similarly, we have ramp up problem. So this problem is an extended version of a sparsity problem. And the recommender system fails in generating the personalization list unless the system has enough amount of rating information. So researchers suggest to make use of other explicit information such as we can use the demographic data, location, age, feedback form, so such like that. The next is your over specification. So this problem arises when the system has information about the items in which the users are interested and thus never suggest any item other than that category of items. So this problem leads to the lack of diversity. And this is known as your uh, this over specification problem. Right. Then the user drift of interest is also there. Or you can say change in user behavior. So the interest and taste of the user drift over the time, right, as the new trends appear and the new item becomes available. So this arises the different drifting problem as each of the individual user interest can be different from the drift problem. Several techniques have also been used to deal with the temporal changes, such as the continuous decay function was used, and by uplifting the recently rated items and penalizing the old ratings. Or other techniques such as your Bayesian probabilistic tensor factorization method was used to deal with this collaborative filtering of the temporal model. So I hope you are getting some idea about how this change in user behavior is. Like suppose I'll give you one very basic example. Suppose you visited uh, Karnataka, okay, for a uh, travel purpose, or you visited uh, Goa, Goa or Kashmir. Let's see Kashmir. So you visited Kashmir, you bought a uh, uh, product uh, tools and guide products from Amazon for understand understanding the more local things about uh, the understanding the more sites about uh, the Kashmir. Right. So after returning back from the Kashmir, if the still the recommended system or if still the Amazon is recommending you the uh, the different uh, sorts of travel related books uh, which are specifically in interest to the Kashmir, so it doesn't make any sense. Right. So we have to make a system which is able to adjust itself based upon the user behavior, change in user behavior. Next is your shared account problem. So the shared profile simply means that two or more than two users sharing the same account. So it's still an open research area or your business problem for the researchers to analyze the user profile. For example, a couple which who are sharing one account while will have different tastes and interest in the products Right. Uh, in such case, the system gets confused and recommends the wrong item to the wrong user. So hence the purpose of the recommended system fails here. And this problem is still an open area of research. So if someone wants to work on it, this uh, shared account, shared profile, uh, they can pick and they can work upon it. The next is the gray ship problem, so where the gray ship represents the users whose correlation value with other users is very low and their interest category does not match with any other user present in the system. So few researchers have suggested the use of some outlier detection technique to identify the gray user in the system. And this system generally, generally categorizes the set of uh, users into two types. One is your white user and the other is your gray user. So what is white user? So white user are the set of users who possess some high user correlation value. And the gray user uh, represents a set of users who possess some low correlation value. 
So the scope of this recommendation system application is limited to few domains only. And most of the recommendation algorithms has been tested and been used in the e-commerce, music recommendations, video recommendations, even on YouTube, you can see, like once you play any video automatically, the, the right hand side, you can start getting suggestions, which you might be interested in listening next. But still, this uh, scope of recommendation system is limited. And it needs it further uses in the area of finance, in the area of healthcare sector, and several other domains, right? So these are some set of, these are not only the set of research problems, but these are some, some set of research problems which you can work upon. Next, we talk about the applications. So the recommendation engines try to make a product or service the recommendation to the people in a way the recommendations recommenders try to narrow down the choices for people by presenting them with suggestions that they are most likely to buy or use so the recommendation systems are almost everywhere from this amazon to netflix from facebook to linkedin right so in fact a large chunk of amazon's revenue is generated from recommendations alone as we said that around 30 percent of the page views comes through the recommendations these companies like YouTube and Netflix also depend upon their recommendation engines, right? To help the users discover new content. So some of the examples in our everyday, everyday lives are this, uh, suppose this Amazon, it uses the data from its millions of customers to identify which items are usually bought together and makes recommendation based on that. So the recommendation in Amazon.com are provided on the basis of the explicitly provided ratings, buying behaviors, browsing histories. Okay. Similarly, for the LinkedIn, LinkedIn utilizes the data from your past experience, current job titles, and endorsements that suggest the probable job for you. Right. So the next is a Netflix. So when we rate a movie or set up our preference in the on the Netflix, it you will see like when you create a new profile the netflix used to suggest a few items and ask you what what kind of genre you are interested in so as soon as you select those genres genres automatically when you log in the next time we used to get the recommendations based on those genres only right so this netflix uses this data and similar data from hundreds of other subscribers to recommend the movies and tv series so these ratings and actions are then being used by the Netflix to make the recommendations. Similarly, for the Facebook, this recommender system do not directly recommend products, but they recommend the connections, right? So the ultimate goal of this recommender system is to increase the sales of a company, right? To make that happen, the recommendation system should display or provide only meaningful items to the user. So we have divided some specific goals of the recommended system, which includes uh, relevance, novelty, diversity, and serendipity. So relevance means that the recommendation, the recommended items will only make sense if they are relevant to the user. So users are more likely or uh, to buy or consume items they find relevant, right? Or they find interesting. So that is covered under the relevance. The next feature, novelty. So along with relevance, novelty is another vital factor. So recommended items will make more sense if the items are something that the user has not seen or consumed before. So we are going to recommend some novel set of items to the end user. Next is your serendipity. So sometimes recommending, recommending items which are somewhat unexpected can also boost the sales. So serendipity is however, different from the novelty, we are trying to actually surprise the user. So suppose if a new Indian restaurant opens in a neighborhood, then the recommendation of that restaurant to a user who normally eats Indian food is a novel, but not necessarily serendipitous. Right? It is a novel recommendation, but it is not a serendipity, serendipity because it's not surprising the user. User will be interested in that item because he has already shown interest in the Indian food before. Right? So on the other hand, when the user is recommended a Chinese food or Ethiopian food, so it is, and it was unknown to the user that such food might appeal to him or her. So then this recommendation is serendipitous. 
Okay. So I hope the difference between the serendipity and novelty is clear to you now with, the, with this example. Now, the diversity. Also, increasing the diversity in recommendation is equally important. Simply a recommendation, recommending the items which are similar to each other isn't of much use. Right. So, therefore, we, we used to uh, recommend a diverse set of items to the end user. Now, let us see one implementation of uh, thing the code part we will see in the afternoon, but let us see the base what actually we are trying to do. Okay, so first, this is a data set description which I like to give. We have considered a mobile as 100 key data set where the number of users present is around 943, number of items present is around 1682, total number of ratings is 1 lakh, and the sparsity is around 93.70, which is quite high. Similarly, if you see in the mobile as 20 and data set, you can see the number of users has around, was around 1 lakh 38,000. Number of items or the number of movies or the number of products is around 27,278. And the number of ratings is around 20 lakhs. So 2 crore, it's 2 crore 263, so which is quite high. But you can see here, still the sparsity percentage is very, very, very high. Right. So in this case, how this recommendation system will work, which you will see. Okay. So I have generated one model, which is based upon very basic three principles. Okay. This is the first, uh, the EDA for your data set, which is representing the different uh, rating behavior and the number of ratings which the user have given, the mean user ratings, the number of records, the occupation of different uh, users, like the users can be known to administrative uh, artist, doctor, educator, engineer, entertainer, executive, and many more such as retired, salesman, scientist, student, technician, writer. So these are the different occupation of this the different set of users present in the system. So you can see here the students are maximum. Of course, the movies most of the students used to watch, right? Then we have seen here the different number of ratings in different movies has received. Right, ratings per movie. Then movie mean rating, mean movie rating. Okay, so most of the movies are rated around 3, 3.5. And here most of the users are rated around 3.5 to 4. Right, similarly, these are the different genre information about the movies which are present in the movie lens 100k data set. So we are counting the records. So we can see in the movie lens 100k, this, this complete idea is for your ML, sorry, ML 100k, movie lens 100k data set, which is present in your group lens website. This is a standard data set for, for making a movie recommender systems. Okay. So these are the different uh, records. These are the different genres, genres which are present for different set of movies. Okay. Now we have combined three principal uh, three principal components in order to make the recommendations. One is the user based module, where in this module we calculated the user to user similarity based upon your Pearson correlation coefficient technique, and based on this we formed a high cohort user group using the top and neighborhood for, of any uh, particular user. So the equation for this is going to be. So for prediction orders, x comma i is equal to uh, summation of y belongs to n i of x. W x y this w x y is representing the similarity between the user x and user y. Okay, r y i minus r y r y bar divided by summation of y belonging to n i x modulus w x y. So this is computing, or we can say this is your user-based module. Okay. So here, what rating user you will give to item i based upon what other similar users have given the rating to item i or item one, i one. Okay. So this is what we have computed in the first module, that is user-based module. The next is your item-based module. So this this item-based module we computed the item to item. This similarity based upon the post similarity. Based on this similarity, the top and neighbors of particular user to form a high cohort group of items. Okay, so for that, the equation will be added. The main purpose for writing this equation is while doing the code, we are going to write 
this equation as well. Okay, so it's better to understand this equation beforehand. Mx of i, wij, rxj minus rx1 divided by summation of y and x of i and x of wij, 2ij. Here, this i and j are the representing the item. This i is representing the item. This x is representing the user. Okay, so keep in mind this x and y are representing the users. I and J are representing the items. Okay, so this is your item based module. Item based module. Okay, and then we combine this both item based and user based module, and we have come found a fused model which can be represented as R dash x comma i is equal to ri bar plus we are just going to merge both those things y belong to ni of x summation of j belongs to nx of i wij r by j minus r j bar wx y this might look confusing to you right now but go through it once again it will be very simple is these are just computing this few similarity of your user based and item based. It is nothing confusing. We have used a simple term. You all know what is the role of the summation, what is the role of this NIX, everything. Normal division multiplication bar is representing the mean value, right? So there's nothing confusion confusing in this. Nx of i modular wij and wxy. So this is representing your fused model. So once you combine this user-based, item-based, and the fused model, the final equation is going to be, you can say the combined form, the final equation will be looking quite complex. Rx comma i is equal to ri bar plus summation of y belonging to ni of x, wxy, ry i minus i bar plus summation of j to nx of i wij or yj minus j bar plus summation of j to nx of i wij or xj minus rx bar. Data science is nothing without mathematics so until unless you understand the mathematics behind the recommended system, there is no point of uh, understanding the just storyline, right? So that is why we have, I have included some mathematics part also in that, so that you can be able to relate all those things. Nx of i, then again same wij, wxy, plus summation of j belong to x of i, uh, w, so this is your final equation which we will see okay and these were the different results which we obtained uh, using your user based collaborative filtering item based collaborative filtering uh, by clustering uh, user based collaborative filtering and uh, uh, this model which we discussed the proposed is the this one which we discussed just now so here user based we already discussed item based we already discussed in this by clustering, what it does, it is uh, basically a powerful data mining technique that is going to allow the clustering of rows and columns simultaneously in a matrix form of data set. Okay, so we will see by coding how this uh, result comes up. So we will see that in the afternoon session. Okay, so we will see the future direction also in the afternoon session. So we can stop over here right now. So if, if there is any doubt, I am, I'll be happy to take it. Otherwise, we can end up the session and we can meet in the afternoon. Uh, dear participant, uh, if you have any doubts, you can ask the speaker.
Uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, in this uh, recommendation system, we have one kind of challenge like uh, time awareness uh, in collaborative recommendation systems. So. Time I mean, awareness. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, I mean, what kind of applications uh, like this uh, uh, that we can have this challenge? Sir? See, most basically, this time awareness uh, collaborative system focus on okay. your this streamlined data. Like, suppose if you are talking about this YouTube, right? There you have a continuous streamlined flow of data. So, how you are going to make and um, adjust the model such that it is able to perform the recommendation for this time series. Uh, okay, there is a specific paper for that, for, for this time aware data set, uh, time aware okay. recommendation system. If you want, I can discuss that in the next uh, session. Okay, okay, okay. Sure, sir. It, it is specifically, it is completely different like uh, the application which we discussed just now. So it will take a few minutes to discuss the complete flow. Otherwise, I can share the paper in this reference and you can go through it. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, still uh, any participants, if you have any doubts. Yeah, sir. And uh, coming back to the same question, like we discussed now one problem here. Where is it? This uh, change in user behavior, right? Or we can say the user drift of interest. That can also be taken care by your time aware recommender system. Sorry. Okay. That will not be taken care by the normal recommender system. Because uh, there we are going to check for the changing behavior of the user over the passage of time. Okay. That is what your time is. Where recommended system is. Yeah. Okay. So if there is yeah. no other question, we can stop over here and we'll meet in the afternoon. Yeah, we'll uh, meet in the afternoon. Thank you, sir. Thank uh, thank you so, very much. I have to join the same link or uh, some other link will be shared. Yeah, same link, sir. I will post okay. you, sir. Actually. No problem. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all and have a nice day. Yeah, thank you, sir.